Welcome back, everybody. Sorry about that unexpected uh, tech little break. We had a little technical snafu. We should be back now. Uh, if any of you do notice while we're running the stream, though, that we're having some bad audio or videos clipping out, definitely don't hesitate to drop it in the chat and let us know. Uh, before we get started again, I'm just going to drop in our announcement from the beginning of the episode. We are continuing our playtest of the Tales of Zadia, a Dragon Prince RP based TTRPG. Uh, that is built on the Cypher system this Wednesday at 7.30. And if those of you who are interested, you can find our first session that we already ran through in our videos down below or on our YouTube channel. You can come and watch us take the take on the roles of humans and elves from the Tales of Zadia world and also try to save a bunch of villagers and cute pigs and chickens. So <laughs> to get back into our adventure where we left off, the party has left the temple that left the Athenaeum of Narmsin and returned home. They have taken a night's rest after Twid had a unsettling conversation with their patron <laughs> and everyone is now waking up the next morning rested home in their own beds so how would what would you like to do next twid unsettling no i was impossible i was gonna say twid wasn't unsettled by it it's probably their nightly routine <laughs> twid was very settled by it <laughs> twid was like i'm so glad you have all these fabric tentacles they're my favorite part of the night Thorne is definitely going to wake up before Valen, because they always do. Polish all their armor, clean their swords, go for a run. Like, try to start the day off well, because it's just going to go to shit. Did we have a plan for when we're meeting? Sometime in the early afternoon. Because I don't want to go this morning. I assume we're uh, doing brunch at um, our favorite tavern again. Uh, Calvin, before brunch, is going to take care of some housekeeping, and okay. I assume sell some shit, and you can give me gold out of stream so we don't waste time yeah. haggling over a box of jewelry and some weird paintings that we found under our lake. We can, we can swipe over that particular one, and I'll ha you and I will handle it off stream, but you oh, do some who, buying and selling. Who has the Spellvor shell bits? How many did we get? A member greater than zero. So and, can I have... and one less now because I gave one the twid. Can I have two of them? Two of two. them? Wow. Presumptuous. Twid. I don't twid know how many we got. Twid had to trade a scroll of Ray's dead to get even the one small piece. Yeah, what are, what are you trading? Potentially better swords. I, potentially? That sounds the, like a lot of risk for my investment. And then if I he does, if the swordmaster doesn't take them, I'll still have them and can give them back. Bas it was strongly suggested that the magic crafter in town won't take gold and that he'll want something else. And this could be something else. I have no idea if it's useful. I mean, that sounds like you just need to go buy him dinner. You know, do some flip negotiating. I don't know. I'm <laughs> I'm trying to have all my options, okay? Uh, we can handle this negotiation <laughs> off the stream. Let's continue. But, um I assume Flip is probably sleeping in until we all meet at the King's Rest um er, early. I mean I assume we want to meet before we go talk to Meadow Suite and discuss things in a private setting. You are shown to your normal private table at the King's Rest. Uh, Marge's son is not there today, but one of the other members of the staff does take care of you. They see to it that you have the breakfasts that you like and you have a little private space to discuss. It's someone we recognize. We know this one. Yeah, it's one of the ones you've seen around before. Okay. Just want to make sure nothing suspicious is What's going on. What's their name? On. What's their backstory? Tell me everything. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Won't, won't do that. Okay. Has flip slept with them. Well, no. Um, Answer hazy. Ask again later. <laughs> that's, that's always the answer. Um, mm -hmm. I am going to uh, plop my new bag down in front of uh, Calvin and be like, you can cast identify, right? You, you want me to do do that now 
I mean, it doesn't have to happen right now. I mean, I could have done it yesterday before we came home with my last spell slot. Oh. I'll say you can hand wave and ask for the ask Calvin for this lesson. I asked you, you to know. do it. Yeah, sorry. I Flip would know. You would know that you now not. have you now know you have a bag of holding. Excellent. So I'll say I left it with Calvin overnight and asked for it in the morning. And that's when you told me that I have a new bag of holding. And I squealed with excitement. When I identify it, what's inside of it? Does identify tell you what's inside of it? Uh, you choose an object if it's a magic item or other magically imbued item. You learn its properties and how to use them. Whether it requires attunement and how many charges it has, if any. You learn whether any spells are affecting the item, what they are. If the item was created by a spell, you learn what spell created it. Uh, it doesn't specifically say about bag of holding. You do not know what's inside of it. You do know, though, that as all bag of holding, if you turn it inside out, anything that's in it will come splashing out. Now's as good as time do as it, Do it on the table. Watch a dead body fall out. Uh, yeah, as soon as you tell Flip that's what he has to do, he's going to turn it inside out. He's going to flip it inside out. <laughs> so you take the bag and you flip it inside out, and as you do, you feel this weird sensation of, like, static electricity run up your arms, and then with a weird, like, sound, several items just start to appear above the bag and just plump, 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 plump down onto the table, making the whole table shake, including everyone's dishes. Uh, when you're done... There is four ingots of that same silvery metal you saw in the middle of the summoning circle. They're each about that large and about that thick. They're they're like that classic golden gold bar that you see in all the like Fort Knox movies and stuff like that. But they are of that silver metal, so they are an ingot of the silver metal. You have a number of bags that come popping up uh, one after the other that have arcane sigils on the outside. They don't. Uh, glow with any magic, but it does look as though they're like labeled, essentially. And there's eight bags of uh, various colors. And then there is a slim tome that comes out as well. That is in Sithen. When you look down at it, it has the cuneiform writing that you're familiar with from the Sithen language. Uh, I'm gonna push the four metal ingots over to Calvin. And be like, I mean, I feel like you could probably use these. Um, ooh. I'm going to pick up the the tome, the book, and hold it out to Twid. And if they go to reach for it, I'm going to be like... Twid's hands just float forward. <laughs> wait, you were just using... Uh, can you still comprehend languages, Twid? That was just a scroll. That nope. was a scroll. Yep. No, but I can. <laughs> oh, yeah. Instantly yank the book back and just hand it to Valen instead. <laughs> hey. you, you go to pull the book back, but Twid's hand already closed on it, so Twid's hand just follows you <laughs> to a certain point and then snaps back to Twid. Sorry, Twid. I'm sure I'll find you something else. He wasn't taking it back. He just wanted to make sure we could read it first. Sorry. I assume you cast Comprehend Languages? I will cast Comprehend Languages. Invocations to Call Forth Knowledgeable Spirits is the name of the outside on the outside of the book. I will read it out loud like as I'm reading it. And if you flip it open, there is like a small forward at the very beginning. And it warns the you know, to the bearer, this tome contains invocations to be used to summon forth spirits known to collect and amass knowledge, both temporal and arcane. <laughs> this tome does not in any way, shape, or form uh, advocate the use of these spirits, as many can be dangerous and conniving. You make use of these spell services at your own risk. Oh my gosh, Valen, do you want to summon spirits? <gasps> yes. Oh, I already wow. said yes. I already said yes. Do you want to do you want to go into the forest and summon the spirits now? <laughs> Is it Lord? <laughs> I'll like 
When you say now, I'm gonna like look at the group and see Thorin and be like, maybe later, maybe later. But I'll let you keep going. Okay, okay, okay. Can I come? I just imagine Twid like floating over into the middle of the two of you. Like, can I come? I feel like Valen would would be like, yeah, sure, of course. Like, Zach the player, no. <laughs> Valen the character, yes. While this horrifying tableau is occurring, I'm going to poke around those bags and see if there's anything inside them. So you open up the bags. Inside of two, you find what look to be like metal shavings of different colors. Uh, both bags is like multiple different types of like metal shavings. And the others all seem to be some kind of ground up uh, herbs. We open each one has like a small, like it has like a pungent earthy smell to it, but they look to be different. One has like the look of uh, like ground up flowers. So they're like a soft purple color, but the rest is like a deep green. Spell casting components. Hmm. I mean, I don't mind keeping And I'll say Calvin, if you'd like to give me an intelligence check, you could identify the metal. Calvin, do you want to come? No, no, come? no, I don't identify the metal. You're not familiar with the metal. Do you want to come summon spirits with us, Calvin? That that sounds like a really bad idea. Did you forget about the summoning circle that we just saw in the room where we found the bag? And look, it got us a bag. Did you forget about the foreword of the book that Valen just read? I'm looking at Valen as I say this. I, I look off like I don't like I'm like, oh, look at this lovely beam of wood. It's just it's so beautiful. I'm like not paying attention <laughs> purposefully not paying attention. Like, oh, like the ceiling is just so beautiful. I'm just is that cobweb new? <laughs> Made him give me patience. I slowly slide the book back to flip and like wink like later. Yeah, so I, I just like, like hold open the, the bag of holding. Yeah. Finish breakfast. Uh, and so finishing breakfast, would you like to head to your appointment or is there something else, anything else you'd like to do before you head out? Well, I guess the question, well, Calvin, I know we're not giving the orb to Meadow Sweet, um, correct? Uh, uh, yeah, no, I'm going to keep it. That's what I thought. It's not like it would do him any good. Uh, Calvin will reach into his bag and pulls out, like, literally a textbook worth of, like, paper. And, like, pops it on the table. I was just gonna give him this instead. Oh. Excellent. That'll go well with mine. And I'll pull out my notes, which are more just, like, a loose collection of papers that are, like, very obvious scripty handwriting all over them. And did either of you tell him anything about the super weapons, the you-know-whats? About the orb? No, I mean, I told him about it. He knows about it. Not the orb, the dragons. Oh, no, I, I left that part out. It, it seems like something that, like, the prophetess probably doesn't need to know about. I also had a message from... Um the spirit around our friend Aramir, who cautioned us against uh, what we do with the knowledge that we learned. So, yeah, that was something I definitely omitted from my tale. It is worth mentioning, especially Calvin, if you'd be willing to make another copy, the scales did offer to pay for this information. I, I mean the location of the schools. Th these are just already a copy of my notes. We could we could make more. Porkroll is a, a really good typewriter. In particular, I feel as if they should know Ding. about the pearlescence. We've already seen that the Yuan T still remain. What's to say one of them could still be around, and it is their legacy to deal with. Well, I won't tell you what to do, Thorn. I will say I think we shouldn't write down this information. Um, as someone who knows the power of a good story, 
I think given the warning from our spirit friend, who is also interested in preserving knowledge, that this is best kept as secret, hidden knowledge. Plus, then when we find them, they can become our friends, and more people will become our friends. I, Who said anything about finding one? I also don't think that dragon wanted to be your friend, Twid. No, it definitely wanted, like, that was what killed Naramsen. I mean, that dragon was also like a holographic projection thingy. Holographic projection thingies can't usually be friends, unless they can. <gasps> This opens you are up missing, so many. You are missing the point. But it matters not whether a projection or dragon is capable of being your friend. That dragon was designed to kill people. It would kill you, Twiddlemop. I hear you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I I understand your concerns. I do not share your same concerns. <laughs> um, uh, Flip will be like, but do the Ardent Scale want a copy of mine too, Thorn? That depends how much smut is in it. I mean, an appropriate amount. Only 80%. <laughs> I feel like the cover, like, page is just, like, this elaborate, like, romance drawing of you and Fabio. <laughs> and 100%. you're like, it's not got smut. A hundred percent. It's a weird, like, are they dancing? Are they fighting? Are they flirting? It's underwater. We're not sure. I am sure they would take it to be polite. Come through fan art. And then use it to prop up a coffee table. <laughs> Flip is offended and a little hurt, but understands and just pulls his little <laughs> first draft book back. I would take a copy of it, Flip. Sometimes I read some of your stories to my dolls at night to help them sleep. Side eye. Just side eye. Moving on. Then yes, I, I believe there's not much to do today except for head to Meadow Suites. Um, if there's any free time today, I would like to at least start repairing my gun. Okay. Yeah, so I'll say you could have used part of the morning since you knew you were going to be running late, but we'll just we'll handle that off screen too. So you leave behind the King's Rest and cross back into the district where you know um, the Temple of the Architect Resurgent is located and the offices that Lord Meadow Suites makes use of. It is the district of town where a number of the refugees are pretty obviously in presence, uh, more so than the last time you went. There are more refugees out on the streets. It's because they're still looking for jobs and opportunities. Uh, a number of people who live in this district are visitors from outside of Britannia. So uh, envoys and nobles from other countries, things like that. So they are often hiring for you know, servant work, carrying, taking care of like various chores, like grunt work. This time too, you see the large, elaborate, like Art Nouveau stylings of the Temple Re of the Architect Resurgent sort of looming over the streets around you. Uh, in this particular one, you can see that there's some scaffolding set up, and they seem to be adding another, uh, like, more elaborate fronting to the building as so though they're continuing their progress. Many of the people there are dressed in the same work clothes that you've seen a number of the members of the refugee wearing. Uh, in particular, you notice that there are a number of... Uh, Salsered, who are all very similar in appearance. They are all carved from stone. They are, um, there's about eight of them that all appear to be, it, it, the thought of like eight identical twins is, would be weird amongst the Salsered where each create their own body. So it seems as though they've purposely chosen to build bodies that look remarkably similar. Uh, Well-carved stone, much like a statue come to life. Uh, the face though is not, uh, human, each one, besides looking almost exactly identical, has a slightly different, um, like, abstract face on them. So they think very, like, Pablo Picasso. So, like, one of them has an ear that's in a funny direction, one has an eye that's sideways, 
Like each of them is almost a perfect rendition of a person, but with one flaw in the face. And each one has a different flaw. Um, I know we've mentioned before that generally you can kind of tell Stulser at age by how like refined they are. Do we get mm -hmm. any sort of impression of like age from these Stalsred? Like, do they seem... So, like, the quality of everything but the one part of them that's, like, purposely weird or strange is very much, like, think Romanesque statues. So, like, realistic, very human-feeling, like, well-made. They're uh, far more articulated than, like, Twid, for example. Like, they very clearly have been designed to allow for a solid movement of the arms and body parts. So a little more action figure-y or, like, uh, I guess the thought would be like mannequins that are fully articulated. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So like you get closer, you can kind of hear the like little small, like the very softest grind of the stone as they're moving. But they do think, and they are all working on the fronting, like starting to elab put elaborate carvings in, and they seem to be being helped by a lot of the refugees. It's almost like they are the the ones in charge, like the foreman of this particular project. But the doors right. to the temple are open, and you can see into the temple as you were, entered it before. Twit, are there often Stalsered that come in groupings like that? No, they seem boring. I mean, tell us how you really feel. Twitter's just going to stay silent. Uh, abnormally silent. <laughs> I'll say Flip was kind of just like saying it casually, but when Twid gets real quiet, it's going to like glance over like, oh, hmm, this is unusual. As you do over the din of the stonework and the sound of like people moving around the street, which is fairly busy with like refugees going back and forth and a uh, slightly larger guard presence than you've seen previously. Over all that, you hear, oh, Twit, it's so good to see you over here, over here. And you see Orman, the small stall thread you met before, still dressed in the vestments of the Temple of the Architecture Surgeon, tiny arms waving in the air. Over here, Twit, over here. And he, they sort of like shuffle up and they come kind of like skid to a stop. And they're like, I'm so happy to see you. I was thinking about you ever since the last time we talked. I gave a lot of thought to the things we were talking about. I heard that your job went really well from Araman. That must be exciting to know that you're being useful and putting your talents to productive ends. Twit is reaching into their bag and slowly pulling out Lucretia. I will reach over and kind of like grab Twid's hand and just kind of hold it and hold Lucretia in the bag with the hand. Like, mm, no. Wait been thinking about you so much i made you something and he like reaches into the folds of his and he pulls out uh it's a little sigil just like the one that he wears that's like a guild mark for the temple of the architect resurgent i know you don't have a guild mark of your own at least i haven't seen one so i'm sure you want to feel like a real stall thread like you have your very own guild mark so i made you one isn't that exciting it can be like we're brothers in this in following of the architect at this point, Twid's whole head is sort of, like, rotating more <laughs> sideways than normal. You know what? After that, I let go of Twid's hand. I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to let this go. However the universe wants this to settle itself. <laughs> I'm not stopping anyone. I didn't and see he anything. he over and slaps it on the front of your uh, chest. And he goes, follow me. Lord, uh, Lord Nosey has been waiting for you. And he, like, starts to, like, happily trundle away. And you have, like, kind of... So stuck a little bit sideways, like not very well stuck. This uh, like fabric applique of the of Temple of the Architect Resurgence sigil. Uh, in the back of Ormond's head, Ormond is going to hear, "How does it feel to be a sheep?" <laughs> you see him stop for a second and like look around, and then like shakes it off. There's nothing special about you. You are nothing. This is dark. Tell us how you really feel. Um, as we're walking in, Thorn is going to look at Twiddlemop and just say, I didn't see anything. I don't know anything. See what, Thorn? Exactly. 
Lord Meadows, we've been waiting for you all day. He's really excited. Yes, we're sorry to keep him waiting. Yesterday was traumatic, to say the least. Of course, that's understandable, but you've you've created a very valuable work by take, looking into the temple, and they're very excited to hear more about it. I'll just uh, pat my new bag and be like, oh, we've got quite quite the gift for Lord Meadowsweet. Gifts are so exciting. You know, I haven't had a chance to finish them yet, but I was going to make sigils for all of you. That's okay. Don't you don't have your time. to. No, no, I, I insist. This, I insist as well. Calvin uh, pulls his vest open to like the Pokemon badge thing, <laughs> and he actually has two guild marks. Yes. And he's just like, I, I, I already have real ones. Oh, see, I just assumed when your salsa red friend Twin didn't have any, you didn't have any either. Well, yeah. Bold of you to assume. <laughs> Assumptions are a dangerous thing, Orman. I don't even say anything to Orman. I just look down at my, like, giant sigil of Velasta and just tap it and, like, walk away. You know you're back there. I'll let you go. Bye. I'm thinking about you, Twid. Twid, I've changed my mind. Do you want me to help you kill them? And he leads you back to the hallway that leads to Meadowsweet's office and then, like, takes off. Like, he goes trundling off on another ho- on another errand. Walking through the temple itself, I will say you can clearly see there are a number of refugees now inside the temple. And they seem to be taking part in some of the services. And there is two members of the, uh, the orders of Temple of the Architect Resurgent in that same robe that you saw the acolyte you met previously, the woman you met before, uh, handing out food and, like, a pamphlet about the Ar- Temple of the Architect Resurgent as you walk by. And like basically, uh, you can see that along with the pamphlet, several people are getting um, offered like tools to work in the temple. Twit is going to cast Mage Hand to pick off that little sigil thingy uh, and bring it down towards their bag. And Twit is just going to look down at the bag and say, can you deal with this thing? And then the mage hand is going to bring the sigil down into the bag. And you see one little tentacle reach out to grab it, crush, throw it around, and like crush it. And like slowly slide back inside. Do the rest of us see this? No, none of the rest of you notice this. <laughs> well, let's not talk about that again. Uh, so you now are standing in, you're standing in front of the door to Meadowsweet's office. Uh, Flip oh, no. is, oh. oh, Flip was just yeah. No, Flip is opening the door and just uh, breezing right on in. Ah, oh, Flip, you're here, enchanting, and he like steps up from behind his desk. Metal Sweet, uh, standing still, very similarly dressed to as he was before. That dark green, like um, olive colored tunic and trousers with the stark black, like perfectly made. To, uh, uh, toga that wraps around to the whole thing and hangs down with this elaborate gold button. Uh, you didn't see the gold like closure the last time. He didn't have it on display. This one shows the same sigil as you saw before, the Temple of the Architect Resurgent. And then below it is another is like a medal that is the um, the Pegasus symbol of Rion, which you did see him wearing before. But he steps over and goes, it's so delightful to see you. I was I was uh, just thinking fondly of our time together the other day, or earlier uh, today. <clears throat> Flip is already like yes, sitting on the. Did he say earlier or- today? Yeah, earlier today. Yeah, he was just thinking of Flip earlier today. Oh, thinking. I thought you were saying like that other time, like you fucked this morning and then left. Okay. Oh no. Today was in thought. Uh, yeah. Flip is perched on the edge of the desk, um, <clears throat> probably wearing some sort of loose blousey shirt, but definitely with something that accentuates the new fashion net uh, and the new bag. And we'll pull the two books out of the bag, uh, his story and Calvin's giant tome of notes, and just like slam it down on the desk and kind of slide it across. Like, I think you'll find the 
tale of our adventure most interesting. You've brought gifts, how delightful. And he like takes out from his desk this large bag and it clanks with the sound of coins. I made sure to bring something special just for you as well. And he takes the books and slides them over the counter towards him. He doesn't move the money yet. He goes, I believe there was a matter of an orb though. And he walks around the back of the desk, sits down behind the seat and like waves you all to take seats in front of him. Thorn stands. That's rather complicated. Calvin, Calvin will explain it the is going to walk up to the desk and like just reach over and grab the, his notes and like I assume Flip's smut is on top of it so kind of just like turn it over and then let Flip's book fall to the desk and pull his over and then like thumb through the index real quick open up to a certain page and then slide it in front of MetaSuite uh, here, here are my notes on the orb um, and then he'll like shuffle in his bag and pull out the orb um, you, you can't really look at it it's kind of going to explode if you if you try. Um, so I, I, I gave you some notes. How disappointing. I so hope to be able to peruse the arcane knowledge within myself. But you say you've given me some notes here about salient topics? Uh, so so I gave you all my notes on, and he'll like page through and go to the index page and like point out each little category as it goes on. So there's the, the trials to get into the wizard's tower, the wizard's tower, the orb, um, and then, then I've only gotten able to like a little bit of it because you know, any like gestures to the amount of writing that he's delivered. It this this takes some time. Um, so this is what I've gotten through so far. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do you mind if I confirm the facts about the orb? You, you sure? I'm pretty sure they're true. I mean, I have the orb. It, it kind of has the info. If you would just hold it a little bit closer for me, I'd appreciate that. And Calvin will just... hold it out. Um, and he uh, raises his hand and... Kind of before he can get too far. <clears throat> gonna kind of lean in and... Like, uh, just to warn you, Lord Meadowsweet, because wouldn't want anything unsavory happening to you that... Uh, the orb comes with certain safeguards to prevent anyone who isn't a student of uh, Naram Sin accessing any sort of knowledge from the orb. Luckily... Oh, I, do not worry. I will simply be identifying the item myself. As you were then. He touches the orb and starts to cast uh, Identify. Uh, as he does, there's this little friction of, like, You've seen other people cast. His magic has that same pinkish hue as his hair. So he still has the bright pink hair and the full beard that is also this bright pink that's really kind of jarring against the black and green of his more drab clothing. But it's this like pop of color. Uh, As he does, there's these little swirls of pink around his hand as he's going through the arcane sigils to, or arcane gestures to complete the spell. And uh, as he does, he finishes it. He presses his hand against the orb. And I will say you, Calvin, feel this like, pulse of energy sort of slide over your hand as it wraps over the orb and you feel a little like it's a little uncomfortable to feel somebody else's identify spell Uh, and his eyes grow distant they like kind of get like a haze to them like he's staring a thousand miles you know the thousand yard stare past everybody in here Uh, i can see you are correct how disappointing it would seem naram sin felt the need to provide certain Safeguards. It's not the first time I've experienced such a thing. Wizards are a careful breed by nature. More like egotism. That too, I suppose. Well, the information here is valuable, and he flips through it. He goes, you had mentioned this is not all of it. I imagine there's more location. Yeah, there, there's there's a bunch, but these were like the ten closest. So, So I figured those were probably the best ones to start with. I appreciate the practicality of such a decision. Uh, I do have a further question, though. One of the things we're interested in is knowing a little bit more about uh, Narumson's experience with the war efforts. There isn't anything in here about the war, as far as you know, is there? I mean, there's just the the the, the little thing that we got from that that woman. What was what was her name? Her her bust was in the uh, the room. Kashar. Kashar. She, she mm-hmm. and 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 Narmson apparently didn't like each other, and her her one bust was it was 
in the room. It, it it's not there anymore. Something happened to it. Well, that is interesting. Kishar is a figure of controversial fame amongst uh, the uh, ardent scales. There's some that still hold deeply to her philosophy and many others who now decry it. I'm curious, what uh, what information did you learn about her? That Naramsen hated her. Mm. And then the entrance hall had a bust of her and one of their generals. And Just talking about how great the war was and how well, and based on the, the halls would help them destroy the Asha High threat. The the hallway. She was either a student of his or, or a, a fellow teacher at some point. But no, interesting. There's, there's also like a whole library in there. I'm sure there's plenty. We we didn't really read all the books. Uh, I'm sure Araman and his team will be able to catalog everything sufficiently for us. It is a shame that the orb came with such safeguards in place. But as I was mentioning before, is there anything in particular about Kishar? Mm. As a figure of history, the Arden Scale have taken a great deal of pains to remove any of her practical information. So anything you could provide us with might be invaluable for our research. Um, Locations of any of her arcane redoubts, notes on her research. As we said, there was a bus that had been clawed through and nothing more. Give me a deception check. Uh, oh, I was gonna say Calvin was gonna chime in. Well, and like the the Narmson hologram thing said that if he was dead, it was probably her fault. So there was that. So like, she she wasn't that nice. Give me a deception check. Natural twenty, so twenty three. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Well, that is disappointing, I suppose. I do not see it that way, but it is your opinion to hold. Hmm. I can understand as an Ashahai. You might feel more strongly about... I would sooner see Kashar's name wiped from this plane of existence. And as you say that, he, you know, Metal Sweet gets this intense look on his face as he kind of, like, turns his head towards you and looks directly in your eyes. Hmm. An extreme position to hold, I suppose. Not particularly. Mm. Well, I appreciate the information. I had hoped it would be slightly more edifying as I searched for some truths about the war, but I appreciate it nonetheless. Mm. And you see him reach up to the bag of coins mm. and he slides it back on the desk so it drops back into the drawer and he pushes it closed. Mm. I suppose I have no further need for the rest of you then. And he presses his hand down on the desk and you, Twid, feel this like like this frisson of like hot heat coming from your hip and your rest. It's coming from within your bag. And you hear this voice like this little tiny shriek of like pain coming from within the contents of your bag. And as it happens, you feel this like sucking force and all of you suddenly disappear as you get pulled into the like Ma of a transportation spell. With a pop, you reappear. Uh, the desk is gone. Lord Meadowsweet is still standing facing you. You are inside a large stone chamber. It is elaborately carved with these two snaking forms of dragons running along the side, both in this dark pink stone. And turns sort of looking at you. Lord Meadowsweet's standing now, standing st- facing you. And you can see that behind him is this large set of double doors that are these huge metallic like vault doors, essentially. And he goes, I had hoped we could meet, find use for you for a while longer, but I, I'm afraid you might have learned too much in Naramson's uh, little Athenaeum. And I, I hate to throw away talent and I hate to make more enemies with Marge, but I can just get a snack out of it. And as he says that, you see his bo- the bottom of his jaw starts to distend, and the pink in his beard oh, fuck. fizzes for a second and starts to pour over his skin. And as he starts to transform, and his body like buckles outwards, ripping the clothes that he's wearing, and suddenly standing before you is the form of a large, pink, pearlescent dragon that's suddenly Mother filling up the fucker. chamber. 
We should have just killed him when we had the chance. <laughs> when did we have the chance? I don't know. We should have just killed him when we met him. I agree. Him. And his large head snakes down to look at you. I wanted uh, to do that too. Marge said no. And oh he my goes, gosh. I haven't been able to eat my fill the entire time we've been in this tiny little backwater. And I can't tell you how hungry I am. So why don't you do me a favor and make it a good chase? And as he says that, you feel this wave roll over. I need everyone to make a wisdom saving throw. I don't want to do that. <laughs> that would be a 23 for Valen. <laughs> So it's just like, oh my gosh, I found the affected dragon. Is this a charmed, exhausted, or poisoned effect that pork roll would be immune to? No. 21 uh, for Thorn. 22 for Twid. Okay. 13 for Flip. Calvin got a 14, and pork roll got a 2. Ooh. I mean, luckily pork roll can't really be super affected by this effect. Uh, but for Flip and Calvin... You are both filled with this terrible sense of, like, the first time you ever truly disappointed someone you loved, but, like, turned up to 20. Like, you are an embarrassment. You've ruined everything. Like, you have chosen to do this terrible thing to someone that you love, and you just feel the compulsion to run away from it. And so as the three of you who saved sort of you feel this wave of like this negative feeling like roll into you feel that horrible empty burning pit in your stomach of like just all those negative feelings rolling over you uh but you kind of like you push them down so you're still feeling it like you're you're definitely still tuned into those emotions they aren't enough to drive you as it happens though you see flip and calvin bolt the opposite direction as you turn to like follow them you can see that there are um there's a, there's five carved tunnels that lead out from the other side of this room and you see them bolt down uh, one of the center tunnels as they just go running. Together? Like down the same tunnel? Yeah, because it's basically they ran as click to the first tunnel they could see. And uh, you see like the large draconic head sort of swivel down to look at the three of you still standing there and goes, hmm, I'm impressed. But do me a favor and go catch up with your friends. It would be a disappointment to eat all of my meal at once. How am I going to respond to that? Um, Thorn is going to draw their swords mm -hmm. and look this dragon in the eye and go, you should have been killed with your bitch of a creator and activate their channel divinity Um, it needs to make either a strength or a... Hold on one second. What is it? Where the fuck is it? Athletic. A I strength assume. or a dex saving throw. Or be restrained. Uh, is there a limitation to the size of the creature that you can use this on? No. Okay. Give me one second. Let me pull that up. Yeah, it just says, as an action, you cause spectral vines to spring up and reach your creature within 10 feet of you that you can see. It must make a strength or deck saving throw its choice or be restrained. Spicy. Uh, yeah, no. So you see that the vines start to sprout around the, uh, up around this large form of this pearlescent pink, like gemstone colored dragon. And as they do, the dragon just slices out with one claw, and they're just torn to shreds. I didn't think that would work, but I wanted to try. I'm I'm losing my patience. I suggest you run. Or I could do you a favor and send you to that goddess you worry about so much. Oh my I God. don't want to know what's down that tunnel. I don't want to fight him here. The question, so the room we're in, is it, I'm assuming the tunnels are big enough for him to be able to get down, right? Yeah. Like each, So does that mean the room we're in now is like big, like he could fly, like, or is it still like? It is, it definitely to give you like a, feel, a perspective, when I say it's a large room, I'm like, it is, um, 
like dramatic vaulted ceilings, like old Gothic church large. Like it is massive. Okay. He could get airborne probably. You get the feeling like it would be a tiny bit tight. He wouldn't be able to fly terribly high, but he could get up above you and like fly around a little bit. Uh, and the tunnel's kind of, it's longer than it is wide. And there's the two giant sculptures of dragons running along the, each side. The rest of the room is like all nicely laid out in this dark, like gray marble. And so everything feels like this high polished, high sheen, like nice quality. And then there's behind him is the double, like large vault door. That, that's what he's standing in front of. And then there's the tunnels that lead down from the other side. And each one is probably about um, 20 feet tall. So you get to feel like in the tunnels themselves, he'd have to fold his wings in to like slide through them, but they would he would be able to move through them. Uh, I would say ballparking it, you get the feeling like he's probably like an adult pearlescent dragon. We are well and truly fucked. That's what you're saying. I think we should try to trap him in a tunnel. You don't happen to want to be my friend, do you? <laughs> As you say that, the large draconic head like snaps down to look at you and like gets a little bit closer and so it turns so there's that one eye sort of looking at you. And you see the eye is um, that same dark, like that same brilliant blue that his eyes were when you met him as in his, in his human form. And he goes, not particularly. Okay. Um... Just wondering. And I, haven't, I haven't eaten a Stalceret in a long time. I wouldn't mind devouring that creative spark inside of you. I like to see, I like the feeling it makes when it snuffs out. I think it's time to run. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do you say that in character? I just, I like, I'm going to lean over to, to Thorn and just whisper, like a stage whisper, I think we need to run. And there's this loud booming laugh, that's like the, <laughs> I think you're right. I'm I losing my patience. I, I go, enough out of you, though. And I'm going to fire a guiding bolt at him as I grab Thorn and Twid to start, like, <laughs> be like, let's go. Okay, roll the hit. Because I'm sick of his t attitude, so I'm going to try to hit him. Oh my god, I got a natural 20. <laughs> Thank fuck. <laughs> okay, that'll hit, regardless. So, uh, roll the damage. Oh my god, I'm so happy right now. <laughs> uh, while this is happening, the two of you running down the tunnel can give me another wisdom saving throw. Three. You keep going. You are terrified. And I will say, Porkroll's just following you. Porkroll is clink, 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 right behind. Excuse I'm you. Do... He does the Naruto run with his arms behind <laughs> oh, him. Oh, with his arms behind him? <laughs> Apologies. That's a very technical distinction. I did um, 32 radiant damage to him. <laughs> Oh, so you fire out that bolt of gui the guiding bolt, and it takes him by surprise because his head's still kind of down where he was looking at Twid. Oh, I so was the, aiming for his eye. Yeah, like, specifically. so it splashes across his face, and he like snaps back and lets out this earth-shattering roar. And you can see where the feet, where his claws are down on the uh, the marble, they gouge out this huge chunk of the marble as it lets out this roar, and his wings flap open and like all of you get like knocked back by this wave of force from wind blowing nothing for like mechanically but basically just like you do that harsh wind you have to like push against it to stay standing and he goes i'm gonna wait to eat you last so you can watch me peel the skin off of everyone you care about as Twin, you're running you Twin, hear that like echoing behind you what is running in a callback I don't have skin. I don't think he cares, Twiddle Mop. Now move. And uh, uh, Twi Twi Twit is going to say, Selwyn, go find the others and send Selwyn since Selwyn has a faster speed. 
forward yeah. to try so and... So Sela will zip off as you go running down the tunnels. And that's what, what were you going to say? Uh, that's a 21 on my second wisdom save. 21, This the feelings are still with you. Like, you still feel that gross, unpleasant, like, disappointment in yourself. But it fades enough that you no longer feel like you have to run away from it. So you kind of, like, come back to yourself in the hallway uh, and, like, take a deep breath. And you realize, like, you're you're back in control of your emotions. But you see Calvin and Pork Roll are still just taken off down this hallway. Um, I'm going to say that Flip, at that point, is probably still just not going to be able to move. And will just be standing there kind of sobbing when everyone catches up to him. When we see F- Flip... Thorne is going to, like, as they're running, run up, hug Flip very quickly, and then slap him. Like, cry later, there's a dragon. And I will say, as you're doing that, as you're talking, you hear in the distance, 10, 9, you know, Brunero warned me that you would probably, this would probably happen. And I do so hate when she's right but I will enjoy this part at least. I'll enjoy killing her once you are dead. Eight. Last talking we're running. Flip is just gonna like- While we're running. Yeah, Flip, after getting slapped, is just gonna close his eyes for a second and just say, I'm sorry, Nana, and then open his eyes and book it down the hall with everyone else. So you come, I will say, Calvin's still running. You can give me your third wisdom saving throws. The others are following behind you. Come on, Calvin, take the save. Dirty 20. Ooh, dirty 20. So you you find yourself sort of bursting out of this tunnel, which was kind of darker into this intensive light. And as you look around, it is smog from uh, Lord of the Rings, like Hobbit status. Just mountains of gold rolling away from you either side, like temple uh, or like the uh, cave of wonder style from Aladdin. Just this mound of gold, jewels, exotic like vases, urns, uh, tapestries. Like it is a treasure trove in here, and it is large and vaulted. The room, the roof above is that same marble, but it looks to be natural, as though something has come into these caverns and like gouged them out. So the marble is like not, it's not polished to that same luster you would expect like when it's a countertop or something. But uh, it does have the veins running through the whole thing. Piles of treasure to either side. And that's what kind of like snaps you out of it because you recognize some of the craftsmanship and it's like, some of it's excellent. Like there's several statues to one side that are all like high quality and you recognize them as being ardent scale statues. And then you start to look around and you see that there's some um, statues that look to be Rionin, Ritenian, like there's like there's bric-a-brac from like all around the world and everything's sort of like carefully organized into piles of like this is treasure is like this treasure and this treasure is like this treasure you can even see a small like mini hill of just like gemstones well we found a large path snakes through the middle do we make our stand here to a stop Uh, I assume Calvin waits for everybody else to catch up, and then. Uh, so, so who who has a plan? Somebody, somebody have a plan. Fight him in the mouth of the tunnel so he can't fly away and kill him. My bet. Maybe try to get the tunnel to cave in on top of him somehow. Did, I don't know. <laughs> and Calvin's gonna look at Thorn and just be like, "Did do do you see?" What what that was? We're we're not fighting that. Do we see any other doors leading out of this chamber? So as you turn to look at the far end, so the tunnel goes on for this this cavern goes on for a decent distance, and you can see there's this large depression sort of in one side that looks as though something like regularly rests in it. Uh, just beyond that depression, you can see that there is indeed another, um, like the vault door you saw at the front behind uh, behind Lord Meadowsweet. There's another vault door that seems to lead further into the tunnels. And there are um, 
there are some like larger, there's a larger great set on either side up high, like above you, where you wouldn't be able, there, where it wouldn't be easy to reach, like about 30 feet up on either side. There's this uh, heavily barred grate that you feel probably leads somewhere else. But the obvious one is the straight back passageway. I think, yeah, I'm going to. Just definitely move to the far side of the room, and you said there are doors? Yeah, just... There's a to... large vault door at the very far yeah, yeah. back. Yeah, yeah. The so door. there's mounds of treasure on either side, this huge pile of treasure that has this depression in the middle. Yep. yep. That's sort of like this little sea of treasure, and then just behind that, like kind of to the right of the what would be center of the room, is this large vault door that is big enough to like be the same size as the chamber you were just passing through. Yeah, I'm on the far side of the room seeing if I can get that door open. So you go rushing over there and the rest of the party sort of is like at your heels. Uh, as you do so, you hear this of all this coin sh like sliding and skittering around. And as they as you do, this weird like ball of like flesh kind of comes pouring out and slams into the ground kind of like 20 feet in front of you. And as it unfolds itself, you realize it has like the consistency and texture of a large octopus. So it has these eight arms that unroll, but as they do, you can see that in the front of its head where its eyes would normally be are these two large gemstones that have kind of been like fused into the face. And as its tentacles unfold, rather than having suckers on the bottom, it's just these lines of jagged gold coins that are like broken and ja and like sharpened. So you can see like these jagged coins all along the inside of the tentacles and they sort of like slam down to either side of it as it like pulls itself up and starts to slowly like undulate across the floor towards you. I don't like this and treasure. The, <laughs> and in the distance you hear five, four, and we're gonna end tonight there. Oh, fuck that. <sighs> Gross. So, <laughs> D and D trope check. The bard fucked the dragon. We did accomplish that. You did choose to do that before you knew he was a dragon. We're in a dungeon with a dragon. Yeah. This and is D and D, y'all. There's and dungeons glob. and dragons. <laughs> Not only also, did you fuck a dragon, you fucked an enemy. <laughs> also bard appropriate. I yeah. mean, we sort of knew that much probably at the start, before the fucking happened, though. <laughs> and there's a monster that represents the evils of capitalism about to attack us. More or less. So, thank you everyone who joined us tonight. Uh, I hope you can join us next Sunday as we rejoin our party. Deep within the bowels of the horde of the Pink dragon, plink pearlescent dragon, Lord Meadowsweet, a one time potential ally revealed to be an ancient enemy. Uh, so we we'll look forward to seeing having you join us again. Uh, before that, this Wednesday, we are going to be running a special, a special session of the Tales of Zadia, a Dragon Prince TTRPG set in the world of the Dragon Prince, where you're going to watch us all take on uh, the mantle of elves and humans in the world of Zadia. Uh, have some adventure, maybe save some people, learn a little bit more about the Cortex system. So if you've enjoyed watching us and you want to learn more about some of our special projects or follow us again, we appreciate the follows. We uh, definitely, we're a small stream, so word of mouth is also super helpful for us. If you have anyone you think would enjoy watching and taking in our antics, we really appreciate it. Thank you all, everybody, and stay safe out there. Night, everybody.